Hi folks, I've got this Bose Cam rear view and front view camera mirror set up, which we're going to install into Sharon's car. This is what the lunar looks like. It clips over your original mirror inside and it's got a camera on the front and you run a camera via a cable through to the back of your car as well. And it's got loads of other features as well. So let's get it unboxed, let's have a look at it and then we'll put it in the car. I'll see you in a minute. Right, so this is the unit in question, the Bosch Cam R2 Stream Media Mirror Dash Cam. So let's get it unboxed. Now I've been after a dash cam for quite a while, but um, they kindly sent me this one and asked me to do a review on it. I haven't been paid for this, but uh, as I say, I was getting one, but uh, it come at the right time, so to speak. So this is the actual unit itself. It's got... Um, multiple connections on the top of it you've got one socket there for the gps that one is for your micro sd card and this one i think takes the maximum of 64 gigabytes you've got your av in button and also your power lead as well so the uh, rear clips there are what hold it to your existing mirror and this one pulls out that is your actual front facing mirror as you can see which pulls out like that and it's actually got a swivel head on it as well, so you can uh, direct it to where you want it. There's a power button underneath to turn it on and off manually if you want to use that. And in the actual box itself, you should have everything here to get the actual thing working. Here is the actual rear camera. Now, depending on what car you've got, you can actually um, stick this on the inside of the rear window. And they also give you two fixing holes as well in case you need to fix it on plastic trim. It is a waterproof camera, so they do actually supply you with another bracket in here somewhere where you can actually fit it from behind your number plate on the external part of the car as well. There you go, that one there. And these are apparently 3M grade sticky pads, so they're very resistant to falling off. And again, this I think is a 1080p camera as well, fully waterproof as well. It comes with a moulded socket on the end, which again just plugs into the other end of the loom, which we'll look at in a minute. These are the two rubber clips, which actually clamp it to your existing mirror. And all you would basically do there would be to hook them over the top like that. Hold it in front of your mirror and then wrap that around your existing mirror and lash it onto the bottom. So your original mirror is actually clamped in there like that. Oh, I actually give you a spare set of them as well, that's handy. The uh, power lead comes via a normal 12 volt socket. And the uh, I think it's a USB-C connector, which connects directly into the top of the camera to power it obviously these cameras you're going to need to run in behind the trim and all that so that's uh, obviously will vary with every car and this is the cable package for your rear camera and again i think it's quite a long lead it may be 22 foot i'm not too sure exactly but um, this is the part that plugs into the actual rear view mirror itself up at the top and the back part, as you've already seen, will connect onto the rear view camera somewhere in the back. And then you've just got to hide the cables. What you also got is this single red cable here, which will tap into your reversing light bulb at the back. So you've got to just tap that onto the feed cable of your reversing light so that when the car goes into reverse, it will automatically send a signal to the rear camera. And this whole thing will be illuminated with the rear camera. And the final thing we've got in here is a GPS sensor. This again plugs into the top of the mirror itself. And you'll just attach this somewhere either on your one side of your windscreen or on your dashboard somewhere like that. So uh, the software within this camera has got a GPS tracking piece of software, which if you access it on your memory card, you get a display of not only your front and rear cameras, it also gives you a Google map with your route you're, you've actually taken and also the speed you're going. So you, we'll, sh we'll try and have a look at that a little bit later on. But that's the kit. So what I'm going to do now is just to plug everything in at a workshop level here. 
we'll just get it going first of all. And to do that, obviously, I'm going to need powering up via a 12 volt socket. Now, what I will say is, is that with this 12 volt socket, your cigarette lighter, if you want to call it that, or 12 volt socket, may not be a permanent life supply when the car is switched off. Now, this has got a function on it, like a, a, a deterrent function, because it's got a feature on this, which if you, someone jogs your car or attempts to break in or whatever, it will start filming automatically for a set time once it's been activated and then it will shut itself off and it will save that file as a safe emergency file. But if you've only got this powered up through a 12 volt socket like this, which is done by your ignition key, in other words, it's dead afterwards, then it obviously can't activate itself once you've uh, turned the ignition on. So you might want to supply a 12 volt socket from a permanent supply to use every single function in this. So I'm just going to set it up now by plugging it in. I've got this uh, temporary 12 volt battery pack there with a 12 volt connector on. So we'll just get it plugged up and let's see what we can do with this. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to plug in the 12 volt supply that goes into the power socket there, which is a nice straightforward job with a USB-C connector. I'm going to plug in the GPS sensor cable which goes into there like that. I've then got the camera cable and that goes into your AV in socket, like that. And I've then got this 64 gigabyte scan disk uh, memory card here and we'll plonk that in as well. Again, that doesn't come with one. So all we've got to do now is to plug in the rear view camera into its loom, that can only go in one way, just look at the pin configuration so we slide that in there we've got these little plastic coatings on the lens so I take that off of there I've also got one on the front of this lens there as you can see so I'm going to take that off of there I'll then remove this protective film on the front of the actual camera itself and then we'll plug in our 12 volt socket into our supply like that turn my power on and the unit should power up as it's just done there. Right, okay, so it's powered up now. Please insert the SD card again, it's just said to me there, I don't know why that is. So let's just put that in again. There we go, right. Now, I don't know whether I've got the SD card in the correct way or not, let's try turning it around. No, it can only go in one way. Right, well, I don't know why that's coming up with that message, but um, so far we're actually on. That's the rear camera there. As you can see, if I face that that way, the rear camera is actually, uh, that goes that way up. So if we touch the screen, we've now got a menu which pops up. With this one, that cuts off the audio. This second button here, that means you can go from different camera views. So we're on the rear camera at the moment. We can turn it over to a split screen where you can see front and back cameras. That's the front camera down there where my fingers are, as you can probably see there. You then touch it again, and you'll get just the front camera. So we'll just have it on, uh, let's have it on split at the moment. Now we're going to go into settings first before we go any further because I want to try and format that SD card. It doesn't appear to be doing anything. So we've got movie mode and general settings there. So I'm just going to take it to general settings first of all. And scroll to the bottom of the page. Format SD card. So let's press that. Yep. Yeah, let's just format it in the SD card now. Okay, so it's saying it's complete now. So let's go back. Right, and there we go, so it's working straight away. So I'm just going to power it off for a minute. And then you'll see that we've uh, cleared the issue with the um, SD card. So let's turn it on. So the ignition would have come on. It starts up. And straight away you can see the little record symbol in the corner there. Showing that as soon as you power up your car, it starts recording with front and rear cameras at the same time. So right, let's go into the settings menu now, just to have a look at that. And it, you've got to stop recording, it tells you that before you can go into the settings. So you stop the recording just by pressing the record button in the middle, and then it stops, and then you can go in and alter the settings. So the resolution is 1080p. You can change that if you want to 720, why would you want to do that? I don't know. 
Movie clip time means that it's continually recording front and back cameras. And you can change that from one minute to three minute or to five minute sections. I'm going to keep that at three minutes. So every three minutes, it will make a new recording. Sound record is automatically set to on as a default. So the reverse line switch is the grid that you get when you're reversing. That is automatically set to on. And your driving mode is uh, off. And that means that when you start the car up, it will go straight to camera mode. If, if you don't, if you have that enabled, it will just go into, it will record your speed and you won't, you'll have a black screen basically. I'll show you that a little bit later on. Parking monitoring, that's the thing I was telling you about where you need a pop, proper feed, permanent feed going to it. This is uh, in default mode, it is in off. So we would either put that onto high, middle or low. So I would say I'd have it on high sensitivity. And what that would mean is, is that when someone jogged the car, it would automatically start recording front and back cameras and keep that as an emergency file. Right, so then we'll look at general settings. Again, the bleep, you might find that annoying. I'm going to turn that off, actually. Don't like that. Volume is set to high. Yeah, I'm happy with that language. LCD power save is off. I'm going to leave that off. Protect level, I'm going to put that on high, as we've already said. And then just go back. So to play your files, you've got to stop the thing running first, obviously. And then you can click on... The files, and you've got, as you can see, front files and rear files there. So front files, there we go. You'll find there'll be three-minute videos, exactly the same with the rear files. There'll be three-minute videos as well. We haven't taken any photos, but you have got the facility to take photos with this as well. I'll show you that in a second. And then you've got emergency videos, no files there. Now, I'll show you what an emergency video is. So if we go back and we turn the unit off or put it in standby... Let's just let it kick off. Right, don't forget now, we have got a permanent feed to this via the little battery pack which I've got there. So if I nudge the camera now, like that, it will come on and it will save the front camera and the rear camera and lock the current files. In other words, you can't accidentally delete them. And it will save them as emergency files. You can see they're running there, look, the little orange dots there. So let's just uh, go into our files now so click on that and we will now find that we should have emergency files and as you can see we've got one emergency front file front facing camera and we've also got run emergency file rear facing camera now these videos in the emergency videos they won't be automatically overwritten whereas these ones will you see right so you're driving along and something happens in front of you or behind you and you want to record it so all you need to do when when it happens to stop the file getting overwritten all you do is you touch the little open lock symbol and that will lock the current file and you know that it's being saved because you can see that the little dot changes to a yellow dot there so that's being saved as a an emergency file or one that you can refer to that won't get overwritten so yeah it does seem to work very well the camera resolution does look pretty good on it I think that's all I can show you really at the moment. So I'm going to take it outside now, wire it in, and then I'll come back to you. Right, okay, this is the car I've actually installed it on. It is a coupe, and uh, normally you'd put the camera in the back window, but obviously on a coupe you can't do that. And you are pretty restricted with view on one of these things. And the rear camera I've mounted just below, or just above the number plate there, as you can see. And I've taken the cable in and through the boot up there and then obviously hit it in, on the inside of the car. So I didn't bother showing you the installation because they're all gonna vary. If I show you the actual unit installed on the car now, you can see that all the cables have been hidden away. And when I turn the ignition on, just down there, the unit powers on, and there we go. We've got the rear view camera, which is in situ. And as you can see there, the little light there comes on and it's recording straight away if i touch the screen i can change the camera views to front and back and the camera at the front there it's situated where if you sweep the windscreen wipers obviously it comes below where the rain for example is sitting so you do get a clear view there as well and touch it again and you get the rear view camera and if i put it in reverse you automatically get the uh, grids there pop up as well. Now again, don't forget you can move the view up and down because the actual camera 
recording is a lot bigger than what you see in the screen there. When you see the actual recording on the screen, you don't just get the narrow view there, you get a whole 1080 by 720 picture. So you're actually seeing a lot more when you've got the recording of what you can actually see on here. Now, if I was in here now, and if you turn around and look at the restricted view you've got at the back of the car with the, the uh, side pillars and the roof, for example, you're very limited on what you can see out the back there. But on the actual camera, I can see vastly past the minimal view you'd have on the camera there. So even if you've got a cabriolet or a car which you haven't got a very good view at the back, having your camera there gives you a lot wider view of the sides of the car because of the wide angle lens. So it's a very good feature that is. And um, if you touch the screen up here as well, you have got a brightness feature up there as well, which you can dim and lighten as well. So that's not a problem. And if I wanted to record now, something that just happened out the front, while I'm recording, or even the back, because both cameras are being filmed at the same time, you just touch the screen like that and hit the padlock, and that locks the current files, and as you can see, that changes to a, a, a yellow notification, and that will now carry on recording as a, an emergency file, and it won't get overwritten. Okay, so let's just stop that anyway. There we go. And I'm just gonna turn the ignition off. Now, as far as powering your unit it up is concerned, what I've done, I've left this out here so you can purposely see. I've put in one of those, you can buy these 12 volt sockets cheaply on uh, Amazon. I think this costs two pounds, something like that, two pound fifty, something like that. And you need this unit on there. Uh, there's a built in fuse in there as well, so that's the reason why you also leave this unit connected. This comes, there's the power lead there obviously, going to the actual camera, which is hidden all through the dashboard. And I've just picked this one up off the uh, a positive live feed. You can do it however you want. You can use a cigarette lighter come on, coming from the back of the cigarette lighter if you wish. And all I do is just hide that inside there and leave that just hanging in the back there and then put your panels back on as well. So that's what we've done there. And coming up here, the GPS module I've just put up there. That sticks under the top cover up here. And the rest of the cable, which is the power lead, and also the rear camera goes along, down, and obviously the power lead comes through the uh, glove compartment there, and then goes into there, and the power lead goes down right the way down the back trim there, all the way to the rear of the car. So let's go inside now, and I'll show you a bit of footage we took yesterday when we was out driving. A few little things happened as well. I'll just show you them as well. Picture. Joe, we've got a picture. Wow. We're on camera. Well, no, because, oh, yeah. Right, so that was, previous was a bit of uh, filming which we left the audio on. And I thought I'd just show you this. This is a rear view camera. And uh, you don't see these very often now come up. You have a look at this coming up now on the right hand side. That's a Sinclair C5 from the 1980s. You don't see them very often, do you? Yeah, this was on our way to Skegness. And I did have a little incident. I'll show you both. This is the front camera of us coming into the Skegness car park. Now, I'm following Gary in his van there. And as you can see, Gary's looking for a space to park. I'm a good distance behind him. And we're going to be, he's going to be parking on the left-hand side. But he takes a little wide swing out to the right to get a nice pull in. And I go to do the same. And look what comes up on my inside. Look. Unbelievable. A woman come right behind me. And you can see that now because I'm going to show you the rear view footage now. She's behind me. This is exactly the same clip from the rear view camera now. And if this was an insurance job where I needed to produce evidence, she's a good space behind me there. And for some reason, she decides to overtake or undertake me on the inside. So here I am, just taking the swing out like Gary did. And then she zooms along the inside there. And that could have been a nasty little accident there. And if I wouldn't have had this to prove it, I probably wouldn't have got compensation. Right, so you've got this little bit of software on the memory card called Auto Player Lite. I've just downloaded it and it's asking me to install it on my computer and it's going to call it AutoVox GPS Player. It's just installing it onto my PC. Close and close it up. Right, so as you can see up there, it's installed the AutoVox software on my player. So if I've got the files on my computer, which I've just transferred them, the ones I want to use. We open the player up, we add our file, choose our file to add. I've got the files on my PC, as you can see, just click on that, click open, 
and it says the start of the journey from where you started this recording and the end of the journey will be down to there you're traveling towards that way there's your speed and there's your direction there there's our little owl look which we recorded there you go so that's a little bit of software that comes with it once you format the um, card and you put it into your recorder the mirror and that's what you um, also get as a little bonus as well if you ever needed proof of anything to show your route and all I've done is I've taken the little card out of the mirror put it in a little card reader and just open the files up on my PC and that's how I've done it this can now come back out now I've saved these files they could be emergency files or whatever and then you, you can then put that back into your mirror and it will just carry on overwriting once you've got your essential files off well there you go that's our, my installation of the uh, Bosch cam uh, call it a dash cam if you want and rear view camera nice piece of kit and it's given us vast superior visibility out of the rear now so if you're thinking about getting one I'll leave a link in the description below for you and you can take a look at them very good in my opinion and I'm glad I've got it anyway thanks very much folks I'll see you in the next video and until then bye for now <laughs>